right. So now on the last part of the vinyls, well, the last part to say we have a lot more to do. Um, right now we're going on to something really good. Uh, Chris has got this one. Not by Dangerous Snow by the Cross. This is the UK edition, I think. Might be. Um, no, it's not German edition of it. Uh, yeah, this is the one that I said that this should contain Fox Lady on the vinyl because it's wasted the vinyl at the very end of uh, one of the sides on it. And it has. Um, obviously, one of the best albums I've ever done was, I have to say, more rockier. First album, uh, the Field of Force album, with the Field of Force track on it. There's some more track like on there, actually, for some reason now, which is cool. This has got the. Um, this is actually, I think this is the gatefold uh, open version. No, it's not the standard version of this one. This has got the uh, original sleeve in it as well. Which is really sweet. Love that sleeve. Really good uh, songs in here, actually. Really old fashioned. Cover, the cover song, the cover song uh, Foxy, Lady, Foxy Lady is not issued on the vinyl edition, only on the CD bonus track. Because um, what pisses me off is on side two, they've used, they wasted all the, the end of the vinyl on there. Well, they could have got Fox Lady on there anyway, as you can tell. Look, mm. it's a waste of time on that thing. What's on the CD version? Jesus, CD version is only contains Fox Lady on it. Mm. Yeah, which is really, the version is fantastic on that, actually. Uh, this is uh, this is, this is only released in there. This is the DMM version. And uh, looking on the vinyl, it looks like it's actually not, not uh, Kevin Metcalf's not done this one. Uh, it doesn't say. This is Germany on it. Yeah, it's just produced in Germany for some reason, that anyway. Good album, actually. Uh, I do recommend the album, actually, because it's very good indeed. It's nice to have. Uh, Part of Love is great. Lies well, is brilliant on it, and it's uh, really, really fucking great. So that, that, that album there, recommended indeed. Cross produced it. Justin Chase Smith produced it as well. And um, a bit no indication about Kevin Metcalf doing that one, which is so unusual. So Cross Band by the Angel Snow, good album indeed. Right, uh, on the next one now, and it's obviously got to be this one across this Shove It album. I'm not going to discuss this one, it's on my channel, so more information about that, click here to see the video for that one. Now we're going on to something really very rare indeed, solo albums, uh, Roger Taylor, um, which I love, the stuff he produces so well. The lot uh, box set has just come out already. This version is Strange Frontier, uh, which I'm still waiting to get this one, which I'm going to get it next week and this is the and only special ones because it's the manufacturer's probably not for sale version yeah this is very unusual this one the vinyl version of this one i think sounds better the cd version is a lot of rubbish I think it's just a terrible rubbish of this one this is uh, being produced on a special paper on this thing it's the way it was <coughs> also mattered in a way never issued this on the cd at all but they did chop the cd booklet for reasons of the thing artwork on it um obviously this is the uh, original emi print on it as well side two obviously contains uh the song a man on fire great song ever made to a single promo awesome edition indeed the there's a what it's a promo edition on the back <laughs> look at it and on the back on the back of the hood oh okay uh, looking at this number here, this number is legit. Now, this has been produced at Penthouse. Nick W. produced produced at Penthouse. Not uh, our Kevin Metcalf guy. So apparently it's uh, been a, a Nick W. print of it, which is even interesting, isn't it? And a uh, really sweet version. That actually sounds a bit louder on there as well, which has got more louder production on that one, which is really, really good. But it's, it's, it's interesting how they would have stuck on there that, that sticker on the back to make sure that you would not sell this just for demonstration purposes to play on the record player in the stores and they use it for the stores version of it it's, it's really interesting that but the credibility of that's that one there it's not it's not actually rare what's want to have that i think is genuinely really good indeed so i want to say strange frontier album great album that uh vinyl version recommend it very good indeed and then we're coming on to a vinyl i've recently just got uh this is the um obviously uh, the uh, which is this is the fun, vegetarian from the space. If you want to see this one as well, just go to my video and click link, and you'll see that review on my channel. It's actually exactly the same one I've got, really, which is fine. Going on from that one, going on now to uh, the term single of Cross's Power of Love. I love this song so much, I love it. But this is a UK, <laughs> this is a UK, exclusively UK 
release. This was never, I don't ever think this was released in the UK. It was always, always released in Germany. This is, in, it's just weird. Um, it's got Passion for Trash. And also part of the series version as well. It's uh, been, uh, um, well, actually, what well, I think is actually a hell of a good song. Live is probably been a good song as well, isn't it? This is the, this is what I was saying before. This is a UK, very weird, U, UK release of it. And it's got Power to Love short version, which is a seven version as well. And Passion for Trash in there as well, which is pretty interesting indeed. Um, look at the vinyl itself. It doesn't actually indicate anything about Kevin Metcalf on here. Just says uh, EMI 12R6251 AA11. And uh, it's also got EMI 12 uh, 6251 and doesn't really have anything about on it really. So I wonder whether this version was was never released in the UK or either this one was probably just promote, promoting the album in the US, which is probably something else from it. Or, the, or actually the Germany version to the UK version of it and stuff. Very unusual. Very unusual indeed. UK edition of that one. Interesting. So that's uh, Power Look by the Cross. Good song. Very good indeed. I said. Okay, got about another few bounces to go on this one, and then later on for this video, so we're doing the seven singles. So look out for that coming up soon. It's be an interesting one as well. So now going on the Nazis now. Uh, let's see. This is the uh, one that uh, Chris has. Uh, this is the. Uh, this is what I understand is this is a very different version of this because it doesn't have anything on the back of it. There's one on the front of it. This is a promotion version. This is a promote promotion promotional use only on there. The and it's another one of these. Uh, demonstration manufacturers probably not for sale. It's kind of very interesting indeed. And this is actually stuck this is actually uh, this was stuck on here. So uh, that is actually on there. I'm not sure, but it may, maybe it was. Well oh, that's probably right and something. Uh, it says this is actually it says Roger Taylor of, of Queen. As I, I think this is or, or Queen for some reason. So this is the promo version of it. That's it's rare this is. And um, this, it, I think this, for some reason, it contains uh, the, I think that could be the album version of it. But I don't know what this side is. No, no album version. Both remixes. Oh, are they? Mm. So we shouldn't just mix them. Uh -huh. so we shouldn't just mix I say, I say the A side is weird, very right? long. It's very long. It's the grooves have been stretched out uh, pretty long on this one, and it's very long. So if you look very carefully on that one. <coughs> you can see that the vinyl's very, very, very sort of like very, very long indeed. It goes right to the edge of the vinyl on that one, which is very, very big, very weird. But that's the B side. On the A side, it's more like just the the big, big, big signs mix on that one. But um, yeah, promo version of that one, rare as well. Uh, this was. Um, I'm not sure where this is produced as well, it doesn't say. It just says 12 RDJ X6379 B01111. And on the A side, it's got 12 Roger DJ X3679, uh, but nothing about townhouse or produced that side, just the way they've done it really for the promotion bit of it. So that's a rare, rare version of Nazis, which is a, which is a promotion version only. Which you can see, most of it use only with nothing on the back of it, just basically the Nazis on there and the back. It's black. Very weird, very interesting that. But it's not for sale. Maybe it's probably not for sale on that one. So it's um, interesting. And then we go on to something else, which is interesting, which, from my point of view, no term single come up now. This is going to be headlong. No, this track. This is the album version, I think it is, is it album version? Yeah, Al album version, this is the album version. It is uh, August People and Matt the Swine. And I think Matt the Swine is the full version of it. I think it is. This is another one, the Powerful label. This is the, um, I'll say Powerful label. This is the best mix ever on this one. It's album version. Uh, this is the Kevin Metcalf one, again as well, at DMM Townhouse. It is, this is a brand new one as well. Uh, I think Mad the Swine is uh, is kind of full in a way on it. It's interesting how it says Mad the Swine with Freddie Mercury's credit. Uh, that's the right one. This Ooh. is that right? It's on YouTube. What was that? I said Freddie Mercury Mad the Swine is credited as Freddie Mercury. 
Ah. But did he write it? I thought they all wrote that song. It was under Queen, wasn't it? It says and Queen Macaron, and it says uh, to Freddie Mercury. It might be redone, a remix version. Apparently it says to remix by Queen and Dave Richards. Ah, oh, that's why. Probably. For that, so to Queen... Ah, so it has been a remix, apparently, that they, they've done it themselves. So they basically have done this as a remix. So. Interesting. Interesting, indeed. Beefy Man and Trident Company have also been credited on this one. And it's very interesting that when you actually write that song. It's been all the take them on there for some reason, or something they've done on that one. So you're gonna try and get track that one, but it's the UK version by the way. Check it down. Hmm. Interesting that headlong. Good. Very interesting that. Interesting. Then we're going on to uh one I've recently got, uh bootleg this time. I have to say, uh he's got volume three, I've got volume one. I have to tell you, this was great to hear this yesterday. Rare tracks, rare stuff. The sound quality on this is really good. It's got Hollywood Records remixes on here as well, which I will explain. This is another one of these ones from the same company we showed you before. This is Ultra Rare Tracks Volume 3 on the vinyl. This, num this is number 27 out of 150 produced. And these are the tracks on the back of it as well. There you've got I Love My Car Rock version. Uh, the that I think that's a Queen Rox version, actually, that one. That's Hollywood remix of it. That's Hollywood, Hollywood remix. All right, Session, taken from the CD version. Uh, that was taken from the CD 2011 issue. Back and Track Mix, Hollywood Records remix. And then we've got under here, Somebody Love, Hollywood Records HD mix. That was taken from Queen uh, Jewels. Jewels, Japan. Back and Track Mix, Feelings, Feelings. That is not the version. <coughs> it's not the version, obviously, on the CD different Fab Bottom Girls and it's a mix of Basco Race which is cool and it is one of the one these ones where it's got this uh, blue edition and it's going on the B and A version as well which is interesting and the vinyl side is really 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 good uh, whoever are producing these vinyls this is actually duplex this one you can feel it's really really two vinyls squashed together and it's interesting I've just felt this now and it looks like it's really really weird really really weird it's just sort of like double duplex in the way from it it's really unusual Shot it's just again. thinking so what if you feel there feel, you, feel your fingers between like this oh yeah and you feel it's it really it's, it looks like it's been squished together with two pieces of vinyl together on it silver is sharp so there. whatever it's uh being produced on it's really interesting that blue vinyl this one very interesting indeed so check it out because obviously we don't know where, where these were produced because there's no information about these ones if anybody knows anything about this at all, these ones, let us know. Please let us know about this because we'd love to know more information about this one. Where are these produced? We are pretty thin they're produced in London. We are pretty thin they're produced <coughs> in the bootlegging sort of environment as well. And this is also available on Discogs. If you type in Queen Ultra Rare Tracks Volume 1, 2 and 3, you will get all of these ones and they are absolutely really good. But pretty good sound quality on these ones, pretty good indeed. They're not soundboarders. They've actually done so well on vinyl. It's good. All the tracks from Queen, Volume 3, I've got Volume 1. You'll see my collection come up soon on the channel as well. Right, moving on from that one, on to two more vinyls. And this is a, actually, this is a very nice edition. This is Roger Taylor's uh, from an Earth double vinyl. Steve, this is, came out on Black to Black Records. Just for, this, just for the credibility of it, I actually like this one. Uh, I like the way they've done this, I like the way they've done this colour on this side and they've done this one as well on the other side. Um, I thought it was actually one, one LP but apparently it's two, two, double LP for some reason. Uh, I think this was possibly going to be a box set of vinyls from Roger Taylor. Uh, I think a lot was going to come out on vinyl but I think they couldn't afford it at the time. But to put this in the box set of the lot is, is a great idea because this is actually going to give you a third of the sound in it as well. Um, I'm not going to take the package obviously, but I'll just quickly say from Mark's point of view, he said this was really good to have. It's nice to have this one. So having I mean, two vinyls on two editions is really sweet indeed. And this is the back to back, to back uh, of the unit as well. And if you want to add that code in there, go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to buzz. Uh, but uh, say so, uh, it's Kubernetes logic down on MP3s as well, and you can also use the can you blur that? code in the back. Hmm? Can you blur that if you want me to? Yeah, I can. Uh, so as you see, there's the phone nurse picture and vouchers, downloads from this album, blah, 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 and it can be also arranged as well on there, which is cool. And that's that one done. 
And the final one we're going to come to is one of what I think, uh, why, of all, why, on, why on earth, or what, I, what on earth am I holding here, beyond me, uh, in, in, whoever remembers Ron Records at the time, where we had Disco Fever and uh, Funky Favourites and all that business going on, uh, we come to something else worse now, uh, forget rock and roll or disco, in the 70s, the star was tripped down memory lane, uh, now we're coming up to something really fucking terrible, awful, and Jesus Christ, this is just bad. Um, never mind, never mind getting your school skits on, going down Parkinson. <coughs> now we're coming up to something of an, well, an, well, well, I don't know what the hell to call this thing. The Royal Philharmonic Orchestra plays Queen Collection. And looks about Lewis Clark with the Royal, the Royal Corbel Society. Sounds to me, the Royal Corbel Society. Right, okay, so what? The Corbel Society sounds like sounds like a sounds like a misfit for kids or something. Sounds like sounds like a sort of a charity ball. Show the bloke on the back. So get on there. <laughs> anyway, Lewis Clark. Looks like he's a Jesus Christ superstar. That's <laughs> weird. Jesus Christ, superstar. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, so what the hell is this? I don't know. EMI produced it though, which is an interesting thing. He did, look, EMI Records, some of it is. Yeah, look. Uh, go, go A2OAS. Okay, that's fine. Um, anyway, what we've got in this final minisrosity thing, we've got Flash. All right, uh, play the game. We are the champions. Don't stop me now. I love my life. Kill the queen. Your best friend, Tio Tenerande. Chris doesn't call love, Bohemian Rhapsody. And there's a lot of these things saying soloists on here. It's got soloist uh, Eleanor, Eleanor Duran. <laughs> it's just, it's my expression of trying to laugh. Eleanor Duran, oh, okay. Uh, Eleanor Duran, I think Eleanor Duran, I think Duran Duran was on this thing. <laughs> for some um, yeah, uh, recording producer. Um, okay, so what have we got here? Uh, musical director Meredith Davis. Uh, recording producer Brian Culverhouse. Uh, okay. Um, recording live at the Royal Albert Hall. Uh, at uh, the Royal Albert Hall, 1981, at the Royal Gala concert. Oh, the Royal Gala concert. Oh, this must be at the Gala thing of this one then. Okay. So, uh, I, I, don't, I don't understand this thing. So, this is the EMI thing. I don't know why it's advertising. Why is advertising a bit of, uh, a, bit of a, a block there? I don't know what that means. What the hell is that? That's weird. It's like a brick. You know, take, take one of those sort of brick in your, your head and say, oh, it's all brick in the face here. Woo! It's like, okay. Another brick in the wall. Uh, brick in the wall, definitely, yeah. Proceeds from this record will go will be donated to cancer research. That's pretty good, that actually. And this is original sound recording made by Solid Rock Foundation. Okay. Uh, and apparently, it says uh, number eleven, co cross keys close, London W1M5FY. Uh, special thanks to oh John Burroughs, John Cooper, Mac, Chris Miller. Jerry Stickles and Phil Sims. So technically, this is an official. This is a this is an official Queen product, not authorized by Queen, but authorized by some guys from producers who've asked them to do this one. So technically, I think this is actually pretty good. This one actually, it's good for the collection. Um, it's my old. There's one ask Mark questions since I bring this up. Uh, there is, is there any singing on this? No. Is it all instrumental? It's back in focus. That's it. Oh, it's back and forth because it's okay. And um, your overall opinion about it? Bloody awful. Oh my god. So I'll put a little bit of a, a thing to you guys. Don't get this at all. But same for the charity side of it and the address that was on there. It's interesting. It's interesting. Borap's okay. Borap's okay. So it'll be all like sort of coalition and things of it. But whoever wants to chop that down, there'll be a budget EP for EMI. Uh, it's actually EMI TV, EMTV 33. It's actually very weird because this came out at the same time as when uh, Greatest Hits came out. So that's right. EMTV 30. Hmm. So what was 31, 32? 33 was this one. 
Interesting indeed, interesting. So, um, interesting little find. I think uh, some little things to be done on that one. So, we found that one with uh, Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ Superstar in it. Go away, have a laugh with it. Yay! Let's have a little bit of fun with Project Wall. Uh, Rolf and Strong Queen, Luke Lewis Clark, look at the. Just keep away from it so badly, anyway. Bad thing as well. Right, so you've seen the uh, Mark's uh, collection of the LPs. In a minute, we're going to do the seven singles. Well, I've got to mention, well, I've just well, I've listened to that. Um, I have just listened to this just a few seconds ago. I'll tell you what, half speed, if you've got one of the turntables, half speed it down, it sounds different. Put it on 33, it sounds like a piece of shit. But actually, Laugh and a half of that thing, I'll tell you. It's really funny. Uh, anyway, going on that, the seven singles. Uh, these are the uh, original seven singles. The first one we're going to go for is uh, Seven Seas Arrive. This is just the main generic uh, EMI logo on it. And it contains See What a Fool I've Been, which is one of the best beasts I've ever made. Um, and for the credibility issue of it, nice, lovely, nice lovely version from uh, that. This is the EMI 2121 print, which is really, really sweet. Trans Studios on it as well, which is really nice indeed. And it is, um, let me just have a look here. Uh, it's a uh, genuine UK pressing of it, which is nice indeed for that sweet version of it. Nice indeed, lovely. Next one I'm going to go to, this one is uh, written on, uh, which has got some writing on it, obviously, KVB, KGB, KGB. Uh, original EMI generic sleeve, this is going to be uh, Frick of the Wist on Seven Single and Killer Queen. Yes, this is the A side, um, which obviously the uh, the Killer Creek, the, sorry, the uh, Fickler Wrist one is the different version than the album version of it because it is brilliant on that one. This is the original EMI uh, release of it as well. Trident Studios production, 1974, and with the, the, the Fickler Wrist was 74 as well from the album of Sheer Hot Tank, which is so cool. I think the ending fades off with without the guitar part on that. All right, the guitar yeah, yeah. pot and then yeah, yeah. it doesn't go on that for some reason. It's cool. So that's another genuine EMI release of it, which is so sweet, nice, wonderful, good. And then we're going on now to another one, which is Lily of the Valley, and also with uh, with I'm, uh, here. I'm here, which is one of the first and one of the best singles ever released from this. Uh, I see written by Brian May. Really just dark. sweet, very dark sort of colour that actually, and dark vinyl as well. Very dark. Uh, Text on that, which you can probably see, which is sweet. And then you've got also on this side, you've got uh, Lily, Lily of the Valley with uh, with from the album Sheer Heart Attack, which is really good indeed. So that's AMI 2256. Nice version indeed, that one. Lovely. Then going on to, oh, I've got actually, but mine was in bad condition, but he's got a better condition than this one Bohemian Rhapsody. Yep. And this is obviously, these versions that came out at the time, these were the original versions that came out because of the rare ones and stuff. This is EMI pressing uh, 2375. Uh, this is obviously, um, I would say, my favourite ones a lot. This is really sweet indeed. Very dark this one, very, very dark actually one actually for this one for some reason. Both sides, nice indeed. I've got this already but my version is totally wrecked to hell. But, uh, got version, but I've got a version of that now. Oh, have I? Yeah, don't oh, get your sweet. <laughs> oh yeah, right, yes, that's right. So there you go. That's it. So I remember the car and that one as well. It's on the EMI release of it. Very, very sweet. On the next one now, uh yeah, on the next one now, this is another generic EMI version. This is your best friend and also a 39 on the back of it. Which was sound a bit different on this one for some reason, so that's cool. This is EMI two three two four two four nine four on that one. And for 39, it's obviously also uh, 2494. Uh, this one, Queen owned this song and owned the record as well. P. Feldman Tribe and Productions but own this one. And uh, same one as well. Sorry, I'll see the one as well. And um, a third one from Night Out Prep, which is sweet, sweet song indeed. Nice to know EMI sleeve. And <coughs> the one as well, double, a, a double, another double A side, includes a great song called uh, Somebody to Love. One of Mercury's greatest compositions ever made. It was at the time when this was produced, this one looks like EMI. Queen Music owned this one. And then White Man on the back of it is, from my point of view, the heaviest sound on that ever. It's actually the album version of that one. And very, very good song indeed of that one. Absolutely amazing. Cool stuff as well. So that's uh, the wonderful uh, White Man. Really good song indeed. UK pressing on that one. And the number is 25, 2565, which is really 
really sweet that one good version next one we have is you and i uh which was a single uh with the back side of time with the down obviously so time with the down there you and i obviously the b-side which is one of deacon's bloody good songs that is really sweet indeed this is a uk original um yeah mainly a bit my uk uh these were just pressed as normal ones apparently nobody's uh I don't think there's anyone, anybody was in charge of these ones actually because I think they were just pressed at the time they were done. But nothing really of this one is anything of their standard thing, whatever it is. But this one is actually pretty decent for the collectability of it. And it's, uh, my point of view, it's decent enough to have as well. So that's uh, Time With The Down, and you and I, and it's a really good version indeed. Brilliant. Right, this is back. This one. Carry on. I'll carry on. Carry on. Right, moving on out of this one, the Queen's first EP. Uh, I have, uh, Mark's already gave me the, the, the cover, the cover sleeve of this one, and uh, this is the one that I really want to store well. My, my version of played on the, the sample of it, which is cool. This is um, interesting just because it's got MB. Monty Burns. Monty Burns. Monty Burns. It's my mind. This is Mark, Mark's uh, own copy. This is. As I have to say, this EP is brilliant. Sound quality is really good. <coughs> uh, nice good quality version of this one as well. This is obviously um, EMI 2623. I think this one was um, Blair's cut. It might be Blair's cut, I think this one. But no, it doesn't, no, actually, it doesn't say anything about it on that one actually for some reason, which is weird. But it's Queen's first EP. Still, that, still the one on the cover I've got that for now. This is cool. Then we're on next on to We Are Champions and We Are Rock You. This is the UK. Uh, sleeve of it. It's really, really nice indeed. And then we've got the band inside. Is um, same sort of really crest design on this one for well, Megan at this side, which is very unusual. Uh, so we've got uh, We Are Champions there, and obviously We Rock You. Good sound on that as well, which is authenticity its best. This is number EMI 2708, and this is just a fucking really amazing. Great song ever made. Bloody good, heavy on good the version. Action. Heavy version that. Very good. And then we're on to Spread Your Wings and Sheer Heart Attack, one of my favourite singles ever from Clean. This is EMI 2757. Nice indeed. Uh, and we're going <coughs> on to the, this is actually a jukebox edition because it's actually got one of those inner sleeves on it, which is the inner cut sleeve on it. It does shame it doesn't have the main uh, intact thing on it, which is a bloody shame. But for the purposes of it, it's actually fine as it is. This is EMI 2757. Apparently it's got someone called Diane in it. Who the hell was Diane? Diane was somebody else. Diane was uh, ex-girlfriend or something. Probably is. Um, but no, it's, uh, no, it's a really, honestly, it's a, it's a great, great single. This uh, Freddie Wings is fantastic. Sheer Heart Attack, I think, is the um, album version with the cut off at the end of it as well, which is really bloody good indeed. So yeah, just, we'll just actually do that. It's absolutely fabulous. The old Guinness app. <laughs> oh, it's freezing as well, it's nice. Two of them is now. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> oh, it's okay, it's okay. Just, yeah, you can tell. <laughs> I'm still filming, but I'm just, just, I just wanted to get out of the way first. Right, carrying on. Now with Basco Rice, which is a shame that this thing is bloody, bloody, bloody excuse this thing. Yeah, you can tell it's really, really wet, worn a lot on this one. Both, uh, but this is the double A side single that came out sure, in the seventies, and um, obviously the single that I really like indeed. Actually, pretty good. Nick, this one, uh, good condition. It says uh, manufactured by EMI Records UK Limited. Hmm, interesting. And uh, this is the um, EMC version. This is EMC. Uh, EMC, oh, actually, a minute, it's got two different things on this one. EMC, oh no, oh, actually, it's got a cross out on this one, which is interesting. It's got a uh, original number on here, which has been crossed out on EMI's approval. There's got another thing on it as well. It's got RTB on this as well, which is interesting. Uh, can't show the camera because it's supposed to be dark. But it says um, R4564XAR2 uh, EMI2870. On the other side, it still hasn't got anything on it, just apart from the number there. So there's a number that's been scratched out on that vinyl, which you can probably see. And that's been a, a replacement thing they've done for that. That's interesting, that. 
So, uh, yeah, basket race by Queen and uh, uh, Thingy on that one. So, interesting indeed. Right, cool. Now, on to the next one. This is another one from a jazz uh, album. It's obviously going to be Don't Stop Me Now. Me, me and Mark have discussed this many times. Overrated song. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, for the karaoke, I suppose. Don't Stop Me Now, original. And here we in seven days. Better. With that. <laughs> This is the best side. Um, but no, it's one of, one of the most pop played tracks ever done this. Uh, this is another RTB1. This is also EMI. Uh, this is EMI number 2910. And it is absolutely bloody brilliant, that version. Good sound quite on the original vinyl with it, which is absolutely good indeed. Right, now on to this, now this next one is very unusual. Um, that's well, very unusual. It's very weird. Very different. Uh, this one is a UK <laughs> printing, but on a different EMI pressing of it. Now, I'm not sure where this is from. No one knows where this is from. Uh, this is um, this is Queen. This is Weird Rock You, taken from the live version of Live Killers. And then on the other side, you've got crazy little thing called Love on here. But what I don't understand is. It doesn't say which side which. See? Look. See, there's nothing on there. Now that's B side. B side's where we rock you. A side's crazy little thing called love, which has been single release of it. So just they must have backed up they must have just backed up the album for that one, but it's a different label on it for some reason. Um interesting thing about this, it's just basically Queen Music Limited, EMI for the other side. The other side is just basically Queen Music Limited. At the time, so we rock you must have been on by Queen at the time they did this. Uh, Queen produced it. Rain Cloud Productions was involved in 1979. That's when it was recorded, that song. So, pretty much on the EMI's release of this, uh, EMI, it's EMI 5001. Uh, it's a very interesting fan that's with a different label on it. Very, very weird that is, but very interesting that is. Very interesting indeed. It's decent to uh, really have something that you, you can really think about. That's nice. Nick W did this one as well. He produced this one for the purposes of their printing stuff. Next one we have is from Live Killers uh, to promote the album and this is um, Arm Here and back with the song Love My Life and it's got some right on there which is uh, but yeah it's from a double album live uh, it's the uh, one they produced it themselves at the time it came out so there you go it's uh, Love My Life from the Live Killers album EMSP3520 uh, EMI number is uh, 2959A and also 2959B with that together as well. Where, where this was to be in, in included with the, the album of Live Killers is a mystery. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Or, we don't know. Pretty yeah, usual. Yeah. Either promotion copies were probably done for that side of it. Interesting that, very interesting indeed. Next one we have is Save Me. This is the UK uh, version of it. Um, which I've got to tell you, this is just a brilliant version indeed. This is not the version that is not on uh, uh, Greatest Hits, by the way. The Greatest Hits version is different to this. Uh, this includes all the effects in this one. Yes. The live, the, the one on Greatest Hits is very unusual. But this is the most important and different thing about it, is this thing here. This has got, uh, let me tell you, on the back. And on the front, so you, you've got... You've already got Sammy on, <laughs> on this on this very weird label that's been produced by EMI. It is uh, from the U U the UK, uh, but it's got EMI five hundred two two. It looks like it's like a really rare version of this one, and it was produced by Nick W as well at the time of producing these ones. So I haven't ever seen this version before, but until I found out another version of this existed, I found it in, in the market store. But well, this one is really the most really rarest, rarest one the lot from Queen's side, um, which is really unusual. So if you can track that one down, it's even easier for that one with the same cover and that one as well. Cut with, let me tell you, which is absolutely great. Um, but that's a really, really rare version of that one. So check it out. See what you think of it. Okay. So just put it there. Raise the I'm giving you a copy of that Save Me as well. Mm. That's in your record bag when you take it back. So you've got, you've got the picture. Is that the same one as what? That exactly the same. Oh, okay. Just sleeve the lock. Right. You're getting a copy of that. Okay. 
Thank you for the months. Right. Now, on the next one now, and it is going to be the US, US vinyl version of another one by To Dust from Electro Records. This is the uh, the American version of it in an EMI Manhattan sleeve, which is not the original sleeve of this one, but the produced best you produced vinyl. This is the um, tube box edition. You can tell by the cut out sleeve on it. And sound quality in the US ones, I've always said before, the brilliant sound quality is really good. And this is uh, this is actually one that was produced by the same guy again. Yes, it is. It's mastered by that and Alan Alan somebody whatever his name is anyway. Alan uh, Alan, sorry. It's got a flower on it. Yeah. Alan somebody. I can't remember, I can't remember what the name is guy. Okay. Alan Zenz. Alan Zenz in Los Angeles, California. But both sides produced by him. Cool. Uh no bad dust and uh, don't try suicide, which is a really good version of that one. So US edition of that one, very nice one indeed, that is really sweet. The next one now is <coughs> play the game. It's um, this is actually in bad, bad condition, but this has got two vials in here, which is uh, very unusual. So there you go, this is a bit like human bodies on this as well. Uh, it's got two different different versions of this one. First of all, we've got the standard white white edition, which is from an unknown source, which is really unusual. Human body is on there, and play the game on that one. This is EMI five zero seven six, and this is um, you know, this is, I don't know whether this is I've got any information about this at all. Uh, it actually looks like it's oh actually it's uh, I can't see the name on that one. Nick, it's Nick W again on. This one, Nick W. This one's interesting. This is a U another UK print of it um, from EMI. Uh, it's the same number, five or seven six. I think this might be made for. <coughs> I think this might be made for cheap box editions. This, I'm sure it is, uh, because this has been in a bad copy on the bad side. So I wonder if this has been produced for um, for cheap box editions only. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Uh, this is just authentic. On it, it's authentic. So uh, two different versions of, of that one, of um, of the even on that one there. Play the game on that one, and play the game on the other one, and then you've got the jukebox edition on that one for that one. So that makes that makes sense then. So yeah, interesting. This one was uh, done by um, play the game Nick W again. Nick W did this one. Nick W did that one. So that's kind of really interesting that one. So check them out if you can get a hold of those two. Very interesting, those two indeed. White labels are really rare. Very unusual. Why that was really rare, it looks like a promo version though. Looks like it, but uh, that's something of a thing we, we're going to later. We went now from that to this. Uh, it's the Flash single, uh, yeah, which Chris has got. Chris has got this one. He's got this uh, on semi single. This is, the, uh, this is the one that Chris has basically. This is the standard version. Football fight. Uh, it's actually very good indeed, and a single version of Flash in it, which is cool. This is uh, the uh, 5126A version, and this is the, uh, I think this one was, uh, <coughs> I think it, the way it's in this one, Nick W again did this one. Nick W, because they're changing, they must be changing names at the time, so Kevin Metcalf didn't come until later on. But this is a um, really good single. Actually, sing I think the single mix is better than the album version, but they never issued the single mix on the album. Of that was that. actually bought Newcastle. Yeah. Newcastle, yeah, sweet, good version that. Oh, then we're coming on to one of my favourite songs ever made, David Bowie and Queen's Under Pressure song. Uh, this is the EMI five two five two five zero version. This is the uh, lovely gorgeous version from the Soul Brother. On this is fucking amazing on this one, and uh, so this is really sweet, uh, nice, lovely cover. Uh, it's got the original copyright on it as well. And also Soul Brothers on there as well, which is the B side. Queen Music in my publishing on it as well. Uh, if Cool Cat was released as the main song with Bowie on it, it would have worked out fine for it, but it doesn't. Uh, for this one, it was done by uh, actually doesn't say who was who was done by this one. Not on Soul Brothers on this side. It was done by M J Penthouse, uh, which is interesting. M J Penthouse, very unusual name. There it is there. Put in the shop. Probably won't get to see because of the shop for that, but it's there anyway. 
MJ Penthouse and that. So that's an interesting one as well for that one. So the only question I've done my penthouse in London, MJ Michael Jackson penthouse. <laughs> Thought it was, but it wasn't. Only question from Queen, oh boy, love our version, good. Next one is this same power one, same power, and back chat on it as well. Yeah, same power. Yeah, originally released on the UK. This is the UK version of it. Uh, this is obviously the um, the 82 version from EMI. This is the uh, 5325 version. And you've got the same power as well, the same one. This one was another one that was produced by W again, I think. Anyway, back chat was the A's, that wasn't it? Nick W again did this one, so Nick W produced that one as well. It's a stain power on Queen. <coughs> There's no need to know to see on that one. There's no main C for that one, I'm afraid, but good thinking of that. Nice one. And then we're coming on to another one, which is without the sleeve on this one. That's Palabras de Amor. This is the UK edition. Another Nick W pressing up, I suppose. Um, but Brian May wrote this one. Uh, cool Cat on the B side. Which is obviously the one with without the Bowie version on it, which is cool. This is number uh, 5613. Uh, both were published by Rain Cloud Productions. And this is the Nick Z, who obviously the press at the time. It will be Nick Z. Make a sense on that one. So that's a generic Steve of um, good old Cool Cat, with Bowie and that one. Awesome. Right. Okay, carrying on now. Um, more vinyls this time, got more that come up now. Next one we have is Body Language. This is a single that was released in the uh, UK. Um, oh, there's two versions in here, two, two vinyls in this one. Two vinyls, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, we've got one with uh, a cut-out hole in it. And we've got one with a thing on it. So, I don't, uh, so let's see. So we've got one here that's uh, 5923, uh, which is the original. And then 5923 on that one, which is another original as well. So this looks like to me this could be a jukebox edition, probably. And this one was probably original and everything here as well. Uh, I do have to say that this is a single I really, you know, this is the kind of the direction they was going at the time of Queen was going in a different thing. Uh, for this one, it's... Um, pretty good so what bugs me is who the hell did it let's have a look right this first one here this was done by um, Nick W, w. w. probably wasn't uh, actually uh, actually it's, it's Noel Noel did this one Noel Edmonds did this <laughs> kind of pretty probably did it Noel Noel Edmonds uh, Noel okay and this this one was done by uh, Nick uh, also by Noel again Noel, so Noel must have been doing these ones for some really weird really reason. So Noel is uh, involved in these ones anyway. So that's two versions of uh, of that. Um, just just the same really, but this one's more jukeboxy. That one's a, 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 a cut a hole in it, which is weird. This is a EMI five two nine three. Obviously, it's got the original back of sleeve in it as well and the front sleeve, and it's really really sweet. So two versions of that one, which is really sweet indeed. And it's uh, nice, it's cool. Right, next one to go on to now is Radio Gaga next. Yes, seven single, single version. This is a very bad condition, this one. But this is the this is the paper sleeve, uh, paper produced one. I've got the blue one, obviously. This is the uh, first Queen song, first McHugh Queen uh, production one, this one, which is nice. This is the uh, Kevin Metcalf. This has been signed as well uh, by Brian May, Roger Taylor, John Deacon and Freddie Mercury, whoever was writing on the time, <laughs> looks like it's not really because look, it's not even it's all it's all yeah, you can see look, it's all written on was, Freddie Mercury and, I was and young. that and, <laughs> yeah, I think somebody was writing on it. It's all written on basically, and they're also written here. Queen, nineteen eighty four, hi. You can see it there. You can see it there. I bring it to the light there. I bring it up to the light. You can see it's got Queen, 198, oh, I can't really see from this thing because the light's not good. It's oh, Queen, 84, 84, and then somewhere it's got high in here somewhere, you can probably see it from that. <laughs> it's probably, there, that's it, that's it, high. Yeah, 
So <coughs> he says, all right, he's got this very early, and this isn't the career of his own thing that he likes to do. Oh, it's only eight. Which is cool. <laughs> eight years old, first not really goes, which is clean. Uh, uh, so that's a memory for him, isn't it? Nice one indeed. Oh, that was from the penthouse one. No, it's uh, George Romero did that one as well, Stern and Stern Sound, which is really straight. Now we're going on to one big three, the Roger Taylor one. Uh, with the uh, great ba Machines About the Humans. It's a single remix that came out. And obviously there is the thing in that. I, I don't know which one, <coughs> what, what order these came in, and whether they were numbered in the one, two, three, four, Freddy, Roger, Brian, and John on it, which is really unusual. This is the black edition that came out. This is Queen 2. This is absolutely fantastic. Machines About the Humans, one of the best B-sides I've ever bloody made, which is cool. So on this one, this one was produced by Nick... Nick Zed did this one, so he did this uh, master on that one, which is cool. So that's one of the big three, UK pressing of it, very nice indeed. Watch it version. Then we've got I want a big three with Is This Real the World We Created? This is the Queen Four, Queen Three uh, single that came out. This is the UK edition as well. Silver injected version this one, uh, which is very unusual. Sterling Sound produced this, and I have to say my opinion, this is still good condition as well, which is really amazing. And it's really uh, very nicely done as well. Uh, I think after these were these were done, these ones, I think I think uh, Kevin Metcalf took a couple of production duties and mastering duties after the certain sound ones were actually condemned and done. So it tells you actually that that's why this was done. This is probably the third print before the paper sleeve came out. The paper sleeve is more better for the sub injected version. It's more um, for the for the issue bit. It's actually fine. So it's good. So that's uh, thing as well. This is what we created is um, more uh, more longer on that van version than the album version for some reason on that, which is cool. But yeah, that, that's what. And also photography by Sam Farr on that as well, which is interesting. So Sam Farr took that cover photo of the shrimp costume on there on the video of that. Interesting, that is so interesting indeed. Good that is one, right? It's uh, good. It's hard life. <laughs> Fantastic. Now going on to the. Uh, well, was, originally there was a 12 single available of this one, which was four tracks in this. This is the seventh single version of Thank God It's Christmas. Yes, this is the UK edition of it. This is the um, Silver Injected version as well. And in fact, the, this other side is, I think, 33. Because according to this... Oh, I see, right now, I've misread this, obviously, it's got Man the Prowl and uh, it's got uh, Keep Passing Up Rimlins on this one. Um, I'll take this side to 33, is it? Yeah. So that's 33, and the other side, 45, obviously, for that one. But that <coughs> Man the Prowl must be the album version, and Keep Passing Up Windows must be album version as well. But that's pretty good, actually, 33 version of that one. This was produced at Sterling Sound. No, it wasn't, it was Nick Zed again, who did this one. So it's an interesting one indeed for that one. Now, so the one that was never issued on the works album, but it should have been on the works album, but it's probably what they were doing at the time it was done for that one. But that one is Thank God It's Christmas. Uh, good EP. Uh, one of the best EPs I like, actually. That one, decent as well. It's good. Now going on to the inner sleeve of One Vision. Seven single version, this one. And this is the red injected, red silver, red um, sleeve version of it, which is inside its one as well. This is the UK edition. This is actually the same version I've got. Uh, this is the uh, red version as well, which is the uh, third vision on the B side, and one vision on the A side of it as well. This is the uh, Queen 6 1. This is the Townhouse DMM version of it. It's fantastic sound on that version as well. It's really good indeed. Uh, nice to have that now. So you ever get a chance to get that in mint condition, it's worth quite a bit of money now, but it's well worth for the, for the collectability issue, and it's really worth for the thing of it as well. So that's uh, one vision, good version of that one, really good. Then we're going on to one that I had, and mine got just damaged in really bad condition. This is also another one bad condition. It's got to be uh, Highlander or Kind of Magic single, which I really love so much. This is the UK version. This is like, it's like the same as what I had. Mine was probably damaged in the time, but, you've, you, but he's got a better version. It's, it's been scratched, actually, this version. It's a big scratch on, deep scratch on that one. Ooh, that bad. Is bad. This is Townhouse, by the way. This is produced by Mr. Kevin Metcalf, and obviously this is the. Uh, as you can tell, it's been this has been played a lot because you can tell by the scratch on the side of this one. But it's um, one of the nicest pieces of history to get this one as well. Uh, obviously, everybody likes the B side. That B side's brilliant. That is so cool. Longer on the twelve inch. It is longer. Yeah. 
it is longer than 12 minutes. I think it's the, the album, the, the mix that we did in the album version of that yeah. one, which is interesting, that one. So, Kind of Magic uh, from Queen, uh, the seventh single version. Really nice to have that one. Sweet. And then we're going to one of the most weird ones of the lot that came out, which was obviously uh, Friends Be Friends, with Seven Seas of Ryan on the B-side. And in fact, I think Seven Seas of Ryan on the B-side is a bit more different. <coughs> it's a bit more... There's a bit more production on that one. Sounds like more... the uh, remix CD 86 version. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like that as well. I think it's at the time because it was just coming out, wasn't it? The remixes came out at that time. This is the, uh, the version I had was the, well, cut hole through, and this is the main version of it. So we've got 70s Orion right on that side, and we also got Friends Be Friends on that side, which is one of my favourite songs. I love for that one. That's cool. So that's that's uh, Friends Be Friends. And that uh, is the remixed version from 86 that you just said there, which is even cool. Good stuff. We are now to more Queen Vinyl and now going on to Scandal. You always see 12 single versions, the seven single version of it. This is Queen 14. This is the Townhouse Steerman version. All right, come back off again. And it is a uh, seven single, which is just brilliant deal on it. And um, so you've got uh, My Life's Been Saved on the B side. And on the other side, you've got Scandal as well on there, which is absolutely brilliant indeed. Nice to keep up. The collectible seed and all that is actually well worth the collection, though, nice to have, which is really wonderful indeed. Good. Nice. And then we're going on now to The Miracle, and this is the uh, standard release of it. This is the standard release of it. This was to promote the um, the new uh, Korean Real Live video, which is bloody dreadful. Yeah. I hate that video so much. And the uh, best thing about it is the stone called Crazy One is taken directly from the VHS source. That's why they put it on the bloody vinyl version. Bloody awful. Yeah, it's absolutely the worst horrendous sound I've ever heard in my life from that. And the new part of the label that came out, this is Queen 15. This is the Miracle uh, album version. Stone called Crazy, which sounds bloody awful on that. I see terrible, terrible sound on that so one. So much shit. Live at the Rainbow uh, 74. Obviously, that's now been improved on the new Rainbow 74. You've just seen the box set of that one, by the way, which do recommend that one because it's bloody, bloody brilliant. Really cool stuff. So the Miracle song, great. Nice one, that is. Nice one to have. The rarest one to have is to pitch this version because it's well worth a lot of money. Now we're going on now to a very one of the most rarest ones of the lot, which you can see, you've obviously seen the video for this, but now we've finally got this on seven single, and it is Brian May produced it and most emotional song with Roger and also with John Deacon on it as well. It's Ian and Belinda, um, Belinda Gillett version of Who Wants to Live Forever, which is really moving to listen, listen to. And I have to say, do not play this because it seriously sends you to tears and moves so much. It, interesting about it is on the B side of it, you've got the instrumental version of it, which is without, without the vocals on it. And I bet you that the, I bet you that is the a different version on the B side with the, with the band playing live, like Roger and Brian on it. Yeah, you hear more more instruments from the yeah. uh, band. This was released on the Parlophone Odeon series. Yeah, the only one. So this is the only one that was released on the label, and it goes to the Bone Marrow Donor Appeal, and it was produced in 1989. <coughs> and it says that the copyright in this recording is owned by Queen Productions. What is Odeon then? So it must have been the Odeon Cinema. Is that a memorial thing you reckon? I have a funny feeling that it's something to do with that. It's a powerful audience series. But if you look at it on Discogs, you'll see some information about that. Oh. It's interesting. So there you are. Shame he hasn't got to see for that one though, but it's uh, very interesting that one is anyway. But it's very moving and very difficult to hear that. It's very, 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 very sad. It's a very sad version, but very good indeed. So try and check it down. That version is really one. good. So Injector one is really good. The paper version, I think, is probably better. The Trump single version contains Extra track, I think it is as well, a longer version mix of this as well. But uh, yeah, Ian the been the version of that one. Really, really brilliant. Really good that. You know, it's got very movement here and stuff. Now, this is the one I have at home. This is the one I've got uh, on here, and this is Breakthrough. This is the one I have on my on the, on the wall. Uh, this is not. This is the version, exactly the same version I've got. Uh, the version I've got, I think it's a repressing of it. This is the original uh, Queen... Uh, jukebox edition of it as well. It's got steel on the back of it as well, which is really good. Which, in fact, I think is, um, in my opinion, more better. It's steel, brilliant. Love that song so much. Yeah. This is a townhouse uh, print of it as well, so it's cool. Got that one as well. 
And the one he played for me when I came and the first time I saw him was Headlong, which was, sounds amazing on vinyl. This is the silver injected version that came out. And apparently it says here, Headlong album version. And on this side, it's got all oh God's people on it. So I'm wondering if that is the, uh, why they haven't put it on there as Headlong and they've put all God's people on there, but have just managed to put on there saying Headlong album version for that. Maybe that's <laughs> big. It's actually the same number, it's Queen 18 on it. So it's the same number on it. That's kind of really, really interesting that. Really, really indeed. UK pressing of that one. Headlong, good song that actually. Heavy song we made. And now we're going on to Innuendo now and we've got the amazing great I'm going slightly mad. Which is a song, lovely, great song I love of the whole lot. With a great uh, back sleeve of the brand on it as well. We should be really that. But in fact it is like that as well. Uh, this is the um, Queen 17. And it's a paper C version as well of this, which is really sweet indeed. So there's the Hitman there. And then you've got I'm going slightly mad, which is there. It's a shame they didn't, I think they on the single they put the Mad Mixer on here, didn't they? The, um, that Mad Mix one. It's the Goose uh, version of it. No. Nah, they didn't. No, they didn't. They nah. put a different one they in there. They put lots of opportunity. That's what cheating on that one. That's right, we're doing that one as well. Uh, so that's I'm going slightly mad from that one, from the window session. Next one we have is going to be Show Must Go On. It's also a single version. This is a single version of it. b side's called Keep Yourself Alive On, uh, which I think was coming from the remastered versions that came out earlier on in that uh, great uh, CD releases of it. And this is absolutely really nice to have. So going on to this one, Keep Yourself Alive was owned by Queen Productions in 1973. Not uh, Keep Yourself Alive sounds very much like your fame edition. Remix. Yeah. So I'm trying to think. Current Sound Records owned by Queen Productions, so they must have they must have had the rights to buy so or Sue Trident Productions out of it. When obviously it says B Film and Trident Company, but it says original record made by Queen Productions. But Trident Audio Productions owned the song at the time. Maybe Queen at the time bought the rights back when this song was released to put this on. For it makes sense and for it. And uh, obviously she must go on the whole the brand new. Full uh, album version of that one sounds well. I think it sounds better than Van on Van and CD. It sounds much harder on that one, which is even amazing. Now we're going on to tribute one, which is the one that was released <coughs> for the AIDS Wear Awareness version of Days of Our Lives and the Human Rhapsody. This is actually one of the nicest collectible pieces to ever have. This. Um, what I understand is I think oh, they did a they did a new um this is a new mix they did on Raheem Rhapsody. It's more um high definition I think it is on this one. Yeah. And it sounds more Yeah, it's definitely a different mix. Yeah, it's a different mix on it. But for the release of it, they did put a lot of time and effort into re releasing this one as well on it, which is cool. Um uh, down this one says nineteen seventy five. It says owned by Queen Productions and it's been published by Trident Music. Not B film and the Trident. So they must have not got right to this and one. And the B side, these are Days of Our Lives. The outro of Days of Our Lives is longer. Mm hmm. That, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because it's it for the thing. So it's a bit, slightly longer that version. So it's not the CD version, it's the version for the release they've done for this one, which is really interesting. So it's Queen 20. So if you're going to try that one down, check it out. Because it's very interesting, that one indeed. I know one of the nicest releases that came out, which I couldn't get a hold of, is this is Queen, George Michael and Lisa Stansfield EP. It includes one song called Calling You, which I've never heard ever on the CD, never heard it. Best version of this was obviously uh, Somebody to Love, These Days of Our Lives from Wembley. The Killer Queen, the Killer and Pat was Rolling Stone was from George Michael's previous tour he did I before he went to Wembley. He's done at Wembley Arena. At Wembley Arena, but not at, not at the concert though. He was doing, no. he was doing it at a different gig at the time yeah. than that one. This is the first time that it was the 33 RPM. It was all produced by George Michael and Queen who did this one. Dear Friends is uh, oh, not, not included on this actually. Yeah. It's got Somebody to Love, uh, Pot Rose Rolling Stone, Calling You, and uh, Dear Friends Days of My Life. Dear, Dear Friends is the 12 inch single of it, which is only for about a minute or so. But it's really, really sweet to have that as well. So I like that one as well. Uh, this is interesting. It says, um, 
Co-writing sound recordings owned by QM Productions under exclusive license to EMI Records. Uh, so Queen Mercury must have been the joint partnership of it, or either Queen Michael or whoever it was. So QM Productions, interesting that, very interesting that is. Interesting indeed. QM Productions, mm -hmm. interesting. There's also a version of this that came out with um, a sleeve inside where you could pull it out and you had like, all the, the tribute concert inside it. Yeah, there's one that's, with just the logo. The yes, box, yeah, the it's in, inside, the, inside the sleeve had like, a special one on the day where I had like a, a ticket oh, as well inside oh. it. It's want to get that one, but this one is well worth for the collection, which is cool. Next one to go on to is uh, Freddie Mercury and In My Defense. This is to promote the album of what you just saw previously, which is the amazing um, um, Best of Freddie Mercury. Uh, this has got the Wolf Euro version of Love Kills on as well, which I have to say is bloody brilliant. Um, and this one is uh, the remix, it's the one i remix of In My Defense as well for this one, which is really, really sweet. This is the one that was actually produced by uh, Dave Clark. We explain on Neverson Spurs Music Publishing Limited on this one. Uh, it's owned by uh, Dave Clark Productions on this side. On the other side, uh, the Love Kills one is owned by uh, it's owned by Rain Cloud Productions, 1992. Not owned by. It's not owned by um, the Mercury Foundation. Sense. They don't own it. So, <coughs> according to the sleeve, though, look on the sleeve. It says here, uh, original song recording made by Dave Cloud Productions, 1992, recording on by Rain Cloud Productions, and 1992, Mercury songs under exercises to EMI Records, but it doesn't indicate on the vinyl. Mm. Well, that's a mystery. But I'm sure Love Kills was by Mercury songs on the uh, album version. Um, the, the album. I think, oh, because it's Georgia World, that's why. I think it's, I think there might have been something with that going on at the time of producing that, that single because after this one was released, it was Scrape Tender. Yeah. This is the one I've got from 1993 came out. Well, you got the 1993. Yeah, I've got the one I, which you which you have seen on my channel actually. Uh, 1993 version of that one is got different copyright issues on that. So these ones are these ones are kind of interesting if you ever check these ones out. QM Productions and the fact that that Mercury songs couldn't own that song at the time. We'll figure with it interesting but that's uh, interesting that one now we're going on to living on my own with what i would say is this is this is the um surgery makers version or no more brothers mix of it you've got the album version and you've got the radio mix as well um album mix probably is the one that came off the original album at the time this one was uh the other version that came up this was actually owned by mighty tape limited on exclusive lines to EMI. This is the Junior Redmond. Oh, apparently this is the one that was done by Junior Redmond from the album of the American version of of the Grip Tender album. Oh, right. That's where it was from. The other one, the radio mix is done by Search for Makers and Mac on this one as well. And not by Mac Tech Music as well on this one. Uh, just says on the bottom, if you can read on the bottom there, it says original sound recording made by Mike Tech Limited, 982, original sound recording by Mike Tent Limited, under the license to EMI Records, in 1993 Mercury Songs Limited, published by Queen Music Limited. So that means they must have bought the rights back from both songs to Mercury's foundation for the ready to release of this one. So that's another interesting thing as well. So you can check that interest in that one. And then we're coming on to something even more rarer than, than ever that, crit, that thingy has. This is a vinyl by the way, but it's a jukebox edition vinyl that came out. And this has got no indication on it at all what it is, but this is very special. This is um, a one you'll not be able to see us on camera, but I'll, I'll tell you from my point of view, I'll put it to light and I'll show you what it is. It says, it's Queen, Heaven for Everyone, Jukebox Edition, album version. And this was uh, specially produced for jukeboxes. And I think Gary Taylor's got this as well. I'm sure he has. On the other side, it says, very darkest by the way, Heaven for Everyone, single version. And it just says, Queen LHDJ21. This very is expensive very to expensive to buy and rare. 
I think it's on camera, but that is uh, kind of what it is anyway from that one. It's rare, the rarest one the lot, and really, really very, very nice indeed. So I reach out to that one down. It, it's well worth a lot of money now, but that is especially just for J2 boxes only. I don't think you can play that on normal turntables. Yeah. You can't play it, but mm. the thing is, it's just dodgy. It sounds like, ooh, like that. Might oh, be, there's ways might to, need a special. There's, uh, there's ways to do that. Well, yeah. There's ways to do that anyway. The jukebox box of that one, very nice type of piece that is. Interesting that. Another jukebox box edition, another black one of these ones. This is um, another rare one. This is actually brand new, this one. I'm very, very careful this one, I'm going to take it. This is um, a Witness Tale jukebox box edition. As you can probably see there. Witness Tale jukebox box edition. Now, your side, it's got um, Thank God's Christmas on it. Very unusual. Christmas thing. That's probably why it's there for that side as well. Jukebox edition. Very, very rare this one is. This is um, Queen LH22 AAA. Oh, sorry, AAA. And you've got uh, the same number as well, and it's just A on that one as well. Uh, no indication who uh, really produces one, but this is very rare indeed. So this is another one of these ones where it's it's very unusual to have this one, and it's rare. It's really, really rare. So there's two special jukebox editions that these are obviously the ones that you need to check out these ones as well. Really rare, these ones. So a little bit of a expensive thing as well. Incredible. We're going now to the pink edition of Two So Will Kill You. Chris has got this one already. Uh, I forgot to say, this is the nicest version ever done. Uh, nice to get this out on 7 single, and the sound quality is much better as well. It also contains the remastered versions of We Are Rocky and We Are the Champions, which is absolutely brilliant. But one thing to avoid is uh, Queen of the Films, don't buy it because it's a load of rubbish. Worst thing I've ever had in my life. I've got it. <laughs> no, oh god, I didn't want to talk about that. <coughs> Lovely pink edition of it. Uh, I think the video for um, best video. Probably the best video of the film was you don't film it yeah, on definitely. it. I love that. Yeah, I, I love, love that, that film. Thing. It makes sense. It makes it's a story that happens yeah, that's yeah. that and it's all about you know what I mean. So you'll you get the idea. I love that video, I love the video so much. And uh, but the, for the version that came out on pink, various indeed to bring this out or, and I think this was for cancer research. I think that's when they brought it out of that. I think it is. Well, it's nice to have that on Pink Bow. It makes sense. The one side plays forty five as I play thirty three because obviously with the two tracks on it as well. I played quite the same. The Kevin, oh, okay. Kevin Metcalf, who remastered this part, he did the mastering job on that one. Praise down to him. Great sound on that. Brilliant. Really good sound. And then we come on to the, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, yeah, um, yeah, this one. Um, yeah, just, just for purposes, right? I hate this song, but I do slag it off because <coughs> Sam and Cowell is a twat. Uh, which is written for it. The, only about, the interesting thing about the B side is firing water on it, which is yeah, live, from, uh, live from live uh, from the South Korea Japan. Play the B side is better. A yeah, side, all well, the crap. Uh, for the for the uh, collectability of it though, I think it's well worth for the collectability of the band itself, you know, because it is pretty rare. But the um, thing about it is, it's just that for the credibility issue of it, sincerity. But hate the song. Ted Hawkins on it, obviously, but that's it. I've got this one already, uh, which is the uh, normal but you, uh, the obviously out the save one, which is the thingy one of that one. Got it already. Uh, like this one actually, both sides pay 33. Uh, one thing about it is obviously you've got the um, Chad and Flea from uh, Bear Chili Peppers with that Ruby on it, if people don't like. But the best one is Give Me the Prize, it's quiet. Yeah. The sound quality on Give Me the Prize is so quiet, you've got to turn up your sound system so loud. Uh, if you play that version, there's extra guitar bits in that. Yeah, there is. I've noticed that as well. Definitely. There's a lot of that in say. This one I really say, turn up loud to ten decibels on that one. It's bloody quiet. Uh, but either that, either that was it, that was the thing that, that obviously that um, Joshua Joe McRae and uh, Mr. Justin Say Smith accidentally dropped down the levels on it. Or that was the purpose of that one. Best thing about it is time with the down is actually pretty good on this as well. Because that's fucking brilliant. Yeah, I love the way that it's nice to have the cut off bit and it just goes in straight into the song. I love that version, it's good. <coughs> so, but you buy that one, uh, really good something to get, really nice one. It's always got the fold out inside as well, which is the um, the big card outside to the Cream box with the original 
Crest logo on it, which Mark is still trying to hunt that down. You saw the Angels and Bing Eve one. He still wants the one. That's the best one. What's that? The, the Crest one. The yes. open wings. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want the yeah, open yeah, wings yeah. one? It's nice, that one. But yeah, it's cool. But that one's nice, that one. Then we're going on to seven single version of uh, Driven by You and Just One Life. I had this on seven single myself actually many years ago. And uh, first Broadway single I bought actually in the thing. So this is actually different, this one. This is a. Uh, this is a weird one. This. this is a paper one, but this is from Germany. It's from Germany, this one. This is uh, just one life, and you've got also that one as well. This is a Germany issue, uh, which is really nice indeed, actually. Uh, brand new, actually. This one, lovely. Um, it's been. It doesn't say what it's produced apparently, but I think this is just one of those ones where it's not a townhouse print. It's actually from Germany. This one. So it's a German sleeve, German thing on it. Actually, it's actually nice to have that one. Lovely indeed. Nice, nice indeed. Because Pal's good drum on that one as well, and uh, good song. Should be made on you that was on. Good. Then we're going on to the Golden Boy single with the Fallen Priest in it as well. With Peter Striker on it. Is it? Did you know? Oh, I knew that, no. On the Golden Boy, Peter Striker is on the back and balls. He is. I love that song. I love it. This is off, this is the Poido, original Poido version. Um, which is all my Mercury songs at the time, which is pretty good. And uh, Mike Ram was also involved, which is cool. And Fallen Priest, which I think is fabulous indeed. Eagle Song indeed in that one. 80, 88 Mercury songs, limited. Uh, this is, as I say, this is the UK version that came out with the generic sleeve on the back. And um, Barcelona, the video was also come up with as well on CDG, which is the, which is the CDG, the CDG version of that is all uncut. It's not cut, it's not like faded out or anything. CDG? So it's, a, it's a CDG, CD graphics, CD, CD video. Ah, CD, CD video of that one, that's the one that's all uncut. With no fades, no edits, nothing on it. Literally it's got all the stuff on it that has it on the, the CD video of that one. So the Golden Boy, Peter Strake was on that, really good guy. But we didn't, couldn't get him for an interview. Then we're going to Barcelona, which was very unusual how this has come around because the footage has been found of the Ibiza concert on YouTube. Um, and they found it and they went, oh, we'll stick it in. It was cool. This is the, um, I think this is the UK edition. It is. This is the uh, nice, uh, beautiful, everybody loves that picture so much. Love it so much. Yeah. It's actually, I don't know where, where was that? Do you know it's where it was taken? It's taken in somewhere in Spanish somewhere. Yeah. Really sweet that is. It's got a nice little note from Montserrat Kabai and also Freddie Mercury as well. He says, as one of the founder members of the National Academy of Queen, Freddie Mercury has performed 27 countries on the world to an audience of in excess of 10 million. Montserrat Kabai, world renowned for her astonishing, stunning technique and extraordinary voice, uh, Kabai is uh, and unquestionably come of the, the greatest DVDs of all time. And he said they met in Boston on the 23rd of March 1987. Which is right because that was when they went, they met him in the hotel at the time. And this is the silver injected version of it, which is very good. Exercises in free love or vocal exercises. It's, it's Freddie Mercury's great vocal on that, it's so amazing. And Boston, which is a single version of it, not the album version of it. <coughs> sweet, nice that is as well. Have. And um, it's just nice to have that. Nice to have that as a single. It's the original single, not the reissue of the camera because I reissued it twice again on uh, Night Night 2 for that one. But love that one. Be good indeed. And then we've got another version of this. We've got actually double, a double A side, um, which is weird. This is weird. This. Um, now, according to this one, I've got this one. Um, but this is not what I. This is not the one. But I have, because this is different. This has got a great pretender on one side, but on the other side, it hasn't got Stop All the Fighting on it. It's got Exercises in Free Love on here. That's the Mercury 7 version. Hmm. And I'm going to have to check this up on my version to see what version I have. I don't know what version I've got on here. Um, you must have the version. It's a 1992 version, version that I've got. For this one, this is probably the first issue that was produced before the reissue came out because it's got the old particle on this one. So I've got a funny feeling this might be released 
at the time before the tribute concert was done at that time. It doesn't actually say, it just says 1987 both sides, but it doesn't say anything about when it was, where it was done. It's Nothing, kind of that. weird. There's no one, no one's got running Renault Cruz in it. It's got, it's got a number on it, but no one's, there's no one in control of this one. And that's very, very unusual. You don't see a silver version of that one, do you? Really? Silver jetted version of that. So, exercise, so a great pretend on one side, and on the other side is exercises in free love. My version has got Stop All the Fighting, where that was the second issue I have, and this is the first issue. Well, that's a mystery. I'll have to sort that one out when I get back, as, when I get back home and find out what there is. Anyway, it's uh, number is R6151, and that is the label there as well on it. But yeah, interesting how that's, that's come around. Make, make me songs on that as well. Hmm. Very interesting, that. Very interesting. Moving on from that one, anyway. Now we come on to Quality Power Mix of uh, Business. Oh, I've already got this one, obviously. So I might as well shortly read. Uh, nothing to say about it. It's the fact is it's just really the best song ever made, the best mix ever. Never released on the. It never released it on uh, another world album in Japan or anywhere else. But uh, there's plans to get his bloody box set out. Get out, Brian, for God's sake. I think he's done it already. Uh, maybe Baby as well on the B side. Great version that is. Kevin McCarthy mastered that as well. Nice tribute to Cozy Pal. Brilliant version that. Really good. And then we got the Seren single and also a recent Trumpet single as well. And it was also Everybody Heard Sometimes on the Trumpet single. This includes Rather the Wild Wind on this. And it is going to be Happiness as well, which is really sweet. This is limited edition number. Four five three five. This has also been issued onto the lot as well. This new thing, anything we found as well. It's really, really sweet. And this is the. Uh, I think it was brand new, wasn't it? You got this one. Yep. Brand new. And it's uh, <coughs> our win live version, which is fucking amazing. And happiness as well. Album version, which is just really sweet indeed. Very nice. That is very nice indeed. So there is also a red version, I think, of that as well, isn't there? Yeah. There's a red version inch. and there's a trans version. The trans version is the pitch disc version. This is really good. And Old Friends live version is very moving to hear. Very moving to hear. We all know who that's about. <laughs> we all know who it is. Same single of Love Kills from Freddie Mercury. This one was uh, the basic that trans single version of it. This is the UK version of it as well, with Raw Pie on this one. This is the UK one. This is the A4735. Apart from the fact this is damaged, yeah. it's got a crack on the it's a chip. <coughs> Not a crack on it, it's a chip. <coughs> I'm glad that went on board with it. Mm. Same with that. Yeah. Cracked. Never mind. But still, it's playable and it's new and it still works. That's cool. So that's really cool. Love kills. Then we're coming on to another one. Which is seven seas of rye. Yeah. Sorry, I've done that. That's in the wrong path. <laughs> Next one is Roger Taylor and Future Management. And a 3D image of Roger Taylor. So you put your 3D glasses on. They are. 3D. There you go. Uh, so Future Management, that's all cry. Uh, this is the UK version of it. Uh, EMI 5157, produced by Roger Taylor. Uh, owned by uh, Rain Clown Productions, Queen Music Limited as well, which is interesting indeed. And uh, from my point of view, it's really, really great song. Actually, one well, Love of Cry is really fantastic on there because it just sounds a bit like a Freddie Mercury song. Um, but it's really Queen song, that good song, that was cool. And coming on now to what one I have already, which is the orange version of uh, edited seven single version of Pressure On. It's really sweet indeed. Also, you have got uh, People on Street Smashed and Dub Sangria, but all these tracks were also issued on the single of the lot, which you can obviously get now on mine as well for that one. And this number is 1759. I think mine's in the 600s, I think it is, but I think it was a thousand copies of these produced at the time it was done, which is nice. Another limited edition as well of Surrender. This is the special picture disc edition of it, which is really sweet. See the picture disc in there. And ah, so. Is that one? This is a Chris Thomas pr production remix and also engineered it as well. Also, on the right side, has got the London Command London Town, which is edited for the rights of the thingy of it. I have to say that I love Electric Fire so much. I think that Electric Fire is his best album ever done. 
uh, absolutely fantastic as well. Limited edition number is 1086. And two to go, and then we're finished. And it's going to be Power to Love. He's also got us some Tremor single. Without seven single, this one. This is the EMI Electrola version. This is the Germany print. Germany, yeah, this is the Germany print. This is the jukebox edition. Uh, and it's, uh, well, as I have to say, it's a brilliant song indeed. I love that so much. This is the album version. Passion for Trash has also sold the album version as well, which is sweet. Really good version indeed. Uh, Reed, Reed House is 1990 on there for some reason. Uh, right, yeah. 1990 was it? Well, 90 was it wasn't 1980. Uh, so this is the, uh, <coughs> it was also available on seven singles, 12 single, and three maxi CD, and also produced by EMI, also released in the UK, which is another thing that I don't understand why that comes in the UK for. The final one we come to now is going to be Freddie Mercury and I Was Want to Love You. This is the jukebox edition. This is the one on CBS, and this is the one that is probably, what I've got to tell you, is the sound quality is brilliant on this one. Uh, this is the uh, also was also played on uh, somewhere all those radio stations played this one in the vaults. This I is played the B side here the other day. Yeah, uh, some of the fighting. fighting on this one. It sounds actually a lot better on it. Uh, Ninety-five original version. This is CBS uh, A six zero one nine, and it is uh, cut right. Uh, we just have a call made by Rain Cloud Productions, and on the other side it's got Rain Cloud Productions on the other side as well for their purposes of this one. So it's kind of really is interesting that this is kind of really rare indeed. It's nice having the CBS uh, label as well, which is all original, original, authentic, and cool as well. And that, and that, my friends, is the end of the video. That is it. Thank you, Mr. Mark, for his great collection. And uh, I'm back in the northeast next week. And apart from that, it's been a great thing to see you guys again. And um, after this video is done, I'm going to do my new vinyl collection. The new record collection is going to get done. And until then, I will see you guys next week on Queensville. Until then, bye.